we are, it is post-summertime blues. We're also still living in the shadow of Gen Con. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, so this first news story has to do with that. We talked a bunch during our Gen Con coverage, and we, I think, have in years past, about the amount of games that come to the show and the ones that are harder to get quantity-wise, mm -hmm. that, that are rare, they only sell some, why that happens, etc. So I thought this was really interesting. The website Board Game Quest, who we post articles on our site f quite frequently, uh, they had an article called Games That Sell Out Quickly at Conventions, appropriately enough. Yes. Okay. And they actually sent out emails and asked questions to some of the bigger publishers that had their games sell out, USAopoly, uh, Portal Games, Plaid Hat Games, and ask them straight up. How many did you sell? How quickly did you sell? And why didn't you have more? Uh, which is like, oh, what a great concept. We just sit here and, and whine about it. <laughs> they actually went to the source and found out. And it's very interesting to hear some of their responses. So by and large, what almost everybody said was, it's expensive to ship. Mm -hmm. They Like, for instance, um, for Cry Havoc... Portal said it was like three thousand dollars for a pallet of you know like a hundred something games, and Seafall was similar. Seafall only had one hundred and forty copies. Um, it will think of the size of the box. That too, yeah, big box, heavy, a lot of components uh, for like Harry Potter. Well, yeah, go. yeah, no, I, I definitely agree, and I can see this all of them. And then not only that, you have to think of storage space for all this stuff. Well, that's another interesting one. Some they also said apparently I didn't know this. Gen Con has rules about booths that they cannot have visible, like, shipping t containers and stuff anywhere. That's the, because they, I, they want to keep, yeah. So, like, they have to find so, creative ways to fit them. But what if someone made a board game about shipping stuff? <laughs> <laughs> That's a gray area. They'd probably, I, bet they'd get, I bet they'd get special permission for that kind of thing. Uh, and, yeah, so, so that, that was basically it. And also... You know, they don't know how much things are going to sell. Right, and that's why I think, um, I mean, yes, we all want our hands immediately on said product, but I really think that Plat Hat pulled an amazing move in which, yes, their thing sold out fast, but you could still go to their site, pre-order it, and get it for this pretty that's much the same always thing. That's good. And, and to me, that's a big deal because... You know that, like that's what I did. And but and if you if that was the thing you really wanted, you still had an option to get it and. You don't feel nearly as dejected, uh, right? I think so. I think that was a really smart move on their part to volunteer that information and stuff. Well, and how do you feel about uh, pre-ordering in advance of the con? Like that was one of the things with Cry Havoc. You couldn't get it because they were all a lot of them were taken by pre-orders. Well, I think that's still that's it's no different than waiting in line. The only difference is the people are doing online, and I'm sure some people. <laughs> Like, literally online. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm sure some people might argue, like, oh, there's people with bots and things like that. But I'm like... I don't think that happens. I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm like, maybe there's two people. I yeah. don't think this is some huge conspiracy. I always think, like, why... I love what... Because very few no. do that. And I'm well, like, oh, well, peace of mind. I can just walk no, no, in. No, exactly. And I'd rather... Even, like, if there's a digital queue you're waiting in front of your computer, would you rather be sitting in front of your computer waiting in an air-conditioned building yeah. or standing in line with <laughs> a lot of other sweaty strangers? <laughs> I mean, I don't know why every, everybody doesn't do that because I never have a problem well, pre-ordering. Well, I understand some reason because, I mean, come on. The, the rush of the Harry Potter booth has to be a whole bunch of, like, press and stuff. Just That's, tr that's true in a way, uh, I guess. I think it depends how big your booth is. Like... Portal games usually don't have that big of a booth, relatively, compared to, like, Fantasy mm -hmm. Flight, which takes up, like, you know, half the convention center. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, yeah, bottom line, yeah, you can't, it's, you can't really hold it against. Like, no, nobody is, like, is trying to rip anybody off. They're not trying, I don't think, to, they're not trying to create. Like, if they knew exactly how many people were going to buy these games, they would bring that exact and correct And in amount. the end, it's going to get to the general marketplace. I understand that, like I said, you always want to be the one with the new stuff. And, like, we always try to get the, all the legendary stuff and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But for me, I guess the one, I only get annoyed if it relates to promos and stuff. Especially if you couldn't get the Gen Con and something like that. Like, you know you wouldn't be able to... Maybe if you can buy it later for $5, that's fine. Like, a Board Game Geeks mm -hmm. site. But if it was, like, something only here... And I'm not talking about some alternate art, like, from winning a tournament. We're talking about, like... An actual... A, a new character or something that throw in there. 
Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I think that when I get a little annoyed about. Right. The other one's like, you're going to get it. Just have patience. I mean, yeah, it's, it's stunk that you can get the Harry Potter game, for example. But they it's do. like, you know, it comes out this month. <laughs> right. <laughs> no big deal. And the, yeah, and not only that, like with all the other stuff we got, we're like, well, we still got all this other great stuff. I mean, and I'm really excited. To, we actually, I think Harry Potter's really, out of the list of you said, probably Harry Potter's the only one we didn't get. Yeah. Oh, I guess Seafall, Se Se but we pre-ordered pre it. So. Yeah. Uh, but so next time you're at Gen Con or any other convention, that now you have, there's a little bit of an, I recommend checking out this article. We'll put a link to it. Just read well, their exact quotes. I guess actually going back, that's the one, I just realized when you just said now, mm -hmm. the one problem with the pre-order mm -hmm. uh, uh, before online, though this really isn't a problem. I don't really see, but some people, you, that means you have to actually pay attention to poor old games. You can't just wait for Gen Con to show up and be ready there. You got to be online knowing. True. But to me, that's not a really, like, yeah. it's like such a small price to pay for that. Because I feel like if you're a person who would buy Cry Havoc, and would be disappointed you couldn't get it, then you're probably following Portal Games. Right. It's not like a... No, like, so like it's technically, yeah. but it's not like... Yeah, I could see... I mean, I, yeah, I could see that argument for sure. But, but honestly, like, it's like the benefits outweigh so much more. Games. Mm -hmm. Characters. <laughs> uh, well, anyway... That's it. So that problem's not going to be solved. <laughs> uh, sorry. Just just get there early and maybe stab some people. Um, no, 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 no. Trample. That's a good one, too.